Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Artist Block, and today we're going to be working on scale and proportion. Now this is a very common technique that most artists use when they're drawing or when they're doing anything like modeling or when they're making things on a, on a pedestal or something like that. These kind of things are really important, especially understanding how one thing correlates to another. When we talk about shapes and when we talk about composition, the whole composition can be broken down into shapes and into different sizes of shapes and when you put those things into perspective of each other they start to make sense so let's go ahead and let's start with the basics so let's start with the first thing let me go to my favorite pencil to make sure that's going on I was doing something on another one of these tabs that's why it was blue so let's see when we talk about perspective and scale and proportion and stuff like that the biggest thing to remember about proportion is size that's usually what we're looking at we're looking at the scale of one thing to another for example say for instance i draw this circle here this is a small circle right this circle is in correlation onto this piece of paper very small and then if i were to take this picture here this little circle and I draw a bigger circle like say for instance like that these circles are obviously two different sizes. That's the basics of proportion and scale. Something that's this small and something that's this small, they are different in one way. Taking this image here and actually putting it in here, you can put more than one picture in here. And judging by the way it looks, you can even go ahead and make another one of similar size. I'm just going to eyeball this. Hopefully this is good. I don't want to look an idiot. But let's go ahead and see if this works. You could take something like this, for instance. That's well, similar enough. Uh, a little bit bigger than that. But you can take things like this and put them together. So, push this up just a bit. And there you got your scale. Scale, in rough terms, is just talking about how one thing looks to another and how they correlate. It's really important, especially when you're working on a picture and something looks similar to another, you can use them as measurement tools, which is the best way to use them. Personally, when I do still lives or when I'm doing live uh, life art, life drawings, I tend to take one small piece and I'll put it to another piece and say, how does this look in comparison? You could do that with these pieces, as you can see, taking one, let's make sure they're about what and what. Let's make that just a tad bit bigger so they're on par with each other. There we go, that's good enough. All right, so. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me move this right here. And let's go ahead and do this just a tad bit. Let's make this a little bigger, sorry. I have to make sure this is right. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, see how you could take even just one of these and take another one of these. You can put these together on top of one another, and you have a way to measure things. In life drawing and still lives and other stuff like that, taking one smaller piece or one bigger piece and approximating it to another is how we develop a sense of scale for a whole picture. When it comes to scale, we're looking at a whole composition and we're saying, okay, this is how much this would be. Um, there's a lot of ways to map out scale on a paper. Um, you can do um, with a siding stick. Uh, when I draw, oftentimes I use my stylus and I actually set it straight. You put your arm out straight in front of you and you turn it, turn your hand as if you were rotating it. You can use the straightness of a pencil or a stick and you can angle or you can judge certain things and you can make them work as far as your pieces. Now, let's go to this next part, which is going to be on still life. So I've got a little bit of a still life set up here. I've got my picture in the corner. As you can see, we have a, uh, we got some pears and a glass. I'm not going to do this uh, super accurately because uh, I just want to get the general concept going. Let's just puff that up just a bit. And when you're working on a picture, you can do a couple of things, especially when working on a piece like this. Say, for instance, that you want to, um, you want to measure this out so you're not doing a whole lot. Well, scale can help you out too. First of all, when you're starting with a picture like this, you're going to do a still life. You're going to want to orient your paper in the right way. Um, as you can see, this picture isn't vert is more vertical than it is horizontal. So I'm actually taking it and I'm going to be putting it in a vertical formula. As you can see right here on my paper, it's more vertical than it is horizontal. It's, um, its height is bigger than its width. So you can do that and you can start with um, measuring out the largest component. 
if you were to do this, by the way, um, you want to make this believable. You don't want this to be super small, like if you're doing like that, put it down here, make it really tiny. If you're going to be doing a life drawing, you want to make it the bigger portion of the piece because you got to be able to fit it all on there. You don't want it to be coming off on the side of the paper either. You want it to be as nice as you can on the center. And it doesn't have to be in dead center because in fact that's sometimes a boring composition. In fact, this picture actually starts somewhere over here. I'm going to start it right here. I'm just going to put this right here aligned so I know where I'm starting. And I want to go ahead and I want to put these pairs together and I want to measure this glass to get a height for our uh, glass jar. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to worry about the, the vine. Let's do the glass. So I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to squint, push them together like this. I'm going to squinch them together like this. Uh, you can't see it. <laughs> I just realized that. But if you take your fingers or you can take your uh, stylus or your pencil and you measure it off with your fingertip so the edge of the pencil and your fingertip can be the stopping point or the starting point and the end can be the stopping point you can take the picture and you can say okay here's one pair and I'm gonna pull it up to here and say it's one pair that's about a pair and a half so I'm gonna start off Hmm, roughly somewhere around here. This is going to be my max height for the picture. Um, scale comes really important, the proportions come really important because this is where the picture is going to stop as far as the glass is concerned. That's the highest picture um, piece that I want to work on. I don't want to work on the vines, so I'm going to be doing that. And then you can, from there, use your shapes. If you don't know how to draw shapes, you can go to my other video about drawing shapes. This is where the shape portion becomes really important because you important because you want to be able to draw a um, nice little box figure. You want to be able to get the approximation of the glass. So I'm gonna actually do this. So let's see. Mm. At its widest point, the pears and the glass bottle are about the same. So if I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I'm doing this as accurate as possible. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so this is my glass. Well, this is my uh, picture from my glass bottle. Uh, if I'm measuring it the fully length, I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna try this measuring this again. Let's turn this around. I can see that this is a pretty good estimate for the glass bottle. Uh, it's a little bit onto the page, not super onto the page. I can lower it down a bit. Um, don't be afraid to erase, by the way, if that um, isn't the exact proper uh, proportion. If you're doing this on digital, you can always lasso it and move it down a bit because that's a little bit more accurate. But if you're not on digital, just erase it and start over. Um, sometimes it helps. Or just take a new sheet of paper, start over on that too. That can be a lifesaver. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and draw this. And I'm going to do this kind of quick. I'm going to do a quick little a uh, couple seconds sketch so don't mind me um before you start you want to make sure that you have your starting points going on we're going to zoom into this just a bit and we can see that there is eh, the pairs are about halfway up the body of the of the potion potion bottle uh, i wouldn't say it's a potion bottle well maybe it is it's got a green color to it we'll call it that for now let's zoom out a bit and we'll say that maybe about halfway is about right in this vicinity um, and then we have the pairs starting out right here and when you're starting with a proportionary figure if you're starting with um, figuring proportions out and you want to get a baseline you can always just draw the jagged shapes and then eventually you can rough them out and turn them into an actual finished piece so I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second let me go ahead and actually this is kind of a that was kind of fat. Let me slim that bottle up just a touch because the pears aren't that big either. Sorry. I want to make sure this is right. So let's go ahead and put on free transform. I'm just going just gonna to squish it together because it's actually not that wide. Mm, that's good enough. Those pears are about what and what actually. So um, if I'm doing these pears, these pears are going to be kind of fat. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We're going to try it. It's not going to be accurate, super accurate, but we're going to do our best, right? Zoom that up just a touch because there's some bottom space around here. So um, I'm looking at the composition. One pair is going to be this is where one pair is, and other pair is about right here. So I'm start the lines. This is a good way to draft your stuff, by the way. So if you're having trouble with um, with making something work as far as a piece, you can always uh, draw them like this. This is actually a good way to do it. You can get the baselines for how much you want something to be or what have you. So I'm moving this over just a touch. 
Uh, actually, let's go back. I can change the canvas size. Digital has a little bit more opportunity for a margin of error, uh, which is the most important thing usually when it comes down to it. Let's go ahead and zoom this out just a bit. Right there should be good enough. Right there, that's good. And then I'm gonna put my, I'll put it right about here. That's one of my thingies. And like that, okay? So I'm gonna start drawing real quick, get everything set up. And then after this, I'm gonna show you guys some particular cases where scale works pretty well. I had some sketches and some drawings that I'm gonna show you guys. This is gonna help you out with your stuff. So real quick, let's get this started. I'm not gonna speed this up, I'm actually just gonna draw this. Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna, you wanna work with uh, you wanna work with uh, pictures when you're, or you wanna work with speed when you're doing this kind of stuff because you don't know uh, how it's going to end up coming out or what have you. I'm gonna zoom narrow this and down just a bit. And I'm just going to roughly come in like this. Nothing special, nothing crazy. You're just gonna be doing it as best you can. Draw through your forms, by the way. Don't uh, don't worry about how things go as far as they look. You can always come back in. You can zoom them up a little bit later. And as you can see, we got a little glass bottle already just kind of coming in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to be drawing through my forms. So here we go. I'm gonna be coming in like this. Uh, if you're gonna have trouble with this kind of stuff, you can always box it in like this and then you can come back in, do them later, like this. It's a pair is a little bit fatter than that, actually. Okay, good enough pair. Moving on to the other pair. This pair isn't supposed to overlap, so I'm gonna move this pair to the side. Actually, let's uh, erase that one. Oop, come back. Uh, we'll do this like this, like this. Make sure that it's going down. I'm gonna do that. So that like that and we're going to take it go like that and then from here I can kind of go in and I could rough it in just a little bit better make it a little bit more angular you know and I could take it and I could just kind of give it some love like this so I can give it some more rounded curve definition I could go in and erase some details and erase some of that make the pair more full like this there we go I'm just gonna go ahead and we're going to Give it. When you're doing life drawings, especially when you're doing sketches like this, couple second sketches or whatever, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting everything portioned. Like these, this pair is about as fat as this bottle is, which is what we're looking for. Um, maybe that bottle is a little bit, the bottleneck's a little bit, a little bit, little bit too short. I'm gonna extend that. You can always make adjustments, by the way. Don't ever like sit there and say, oh, I've sat on I made my grave, I gotta keep drawing. If it doesn't look right, uh, restart <laughs> or at least uh, cut that part of the picture out that you don't like you can always do that it's more of a bottle um, that's that's more like that I'm gonna come back in and do this and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do that get rid of that and there we have it we have ourselves a little bit of a bottle going on here let's, uh, let's erase that and we're gonna face this other pair. I'm gonna do that real quick. Change your perspective if you're having trouble with it and you wanna actually get into there. Let's zoom in on this pair. This pair looks kinda of ugly. So I'm gonna come in. I'm going to, it has a little bit of a curve to it and then it's got a little fatness going on right here. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna hit it with a slightly darker brush and I'm going to come in hit it with some highlights and some stuff like that. We can do some shadow mapping real quick. We'll talk about value. We did that in another video. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and map that out just a tad bit. Uh, it's not gonna be something crazy, but we can do that and make it a little bit more believable. Let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick little uh, map up of what we're working on here. I used to draw a lot of apples back in um, back in figure in regular drawing and life drawing. I love apples. They're so rounded. They got a lot of figure going to them. They're really cool. And do this. Uh, here we go. And then I'm gonna grab a, let's grab the other picture because I'm not really gonna worry about the bottle. I'm just gonna do this real quick. This is the most basic you can work on with a thing like this. Okay. Gonna finish that up, and now we're just gonna 
hit them with one of these and one of these and then we are finished with the product let's zoom back out and as you can see uh, it's a little bit more of a bottle like that there we go and all right we're done cool we have ourselves a finished piece some somewhat we have a life drawing at least we even have uh let's even put some shadows on it and there we go we have ourselves a finished picture we have the pears we have the apple taking the scale you can see that i took some time to actually work on the overall scale of the pears and everything just to make them look more natural to um the the bottle uh everything seems a little bit more proportional uh maybe a little bit more in one way or another we're gonna take that and we're gonna actually fatten that out that's what that looks like actually there we go and we have a finished piece so in short taking proportions and looking at the scale of one item to another really helps with the overall composition of them uh, especially given the fact that if you're doing still lives you can take one picture or one piece of a picture and put it to another and measure them and you can get more accurate results just by doing that um, I really enjoy doing these kind of stuff and I think this is really important to uh, for people to know because some people don't understand how to make right um, proportions when it comes to things like this so just keep that in mind all right so here's a picture that I worked on uh, a couple minutes ago actually I just want to make this real quick for you guys that um keep in mind with proportion um, you can make things really believable with proportion you can make something look really cool or really interesting especially if you make one thing bigger than the other as you can see in this picture we have a human uh, looking down at a mouse creature um, mouse creature let me actually come back in real quick let's do this go there we go and we have um the bigger mouse smaller mouse creature which is only about the size of half of her face and not even that wide it's a very tiny creature only about a couple inches and then we have the human right here smiling down at the mouse and then we have the freezer setting that we have that i love so much if you guys have watched my videos you know that i love uh, refrigerators and stuff like that um you could see that there is a really interesting um opinion not opinion there's a really interesting uh, overall look about it because things are uh, putting together to make more sense um, we have the big freezer box over here that changed the temperature um, these things are bigger so you can actually see them <laughs> or if you don't want that you can make it a little bit smaller so you wouldn't see that you also have these um, androgynous shapes over here in the corner and over down here in the foreground taking um, these things that are different sizes and shapes you can make them fade into the background with a little bit of value and a little bit of size so proportions are really good with understanding um foreground and background but that's another video entirely we'll get to foreground and background in the future in the near future i want to do a um a landscape thing so that'll be a good way to do it so as you can see everything seems to fit pretty well even the depth of the of the field for everything works pretty well the mouse is uh, a little bit further into the composition than the human is or the human's a little bit more stagnant but because the human is bigger she's bigger she can actually get away with that because she is a larger size and then we have this one this is a finished piece that i actually worked on this is something that i really like doing so i like doing landscapes as you can see once again um a character like oh, <laughs> wrong one here's the lasso um as you can see this one character is smaller than the other composition piece because this is just a regular sized person or technically is a bit bigger than an average human so an average human might be a little bit smaller than this but besides the point and then you have the other things like the rocks in the foreground and they're bigger than the other things to make them feel more um, they feel closer they have uh, depth to them and then going into the back even using color fading things out and making things look a bit more muted these ways um, you can actually create a much more believable sense of scale just by taking smaller things and even just fading them out and doing things like that so um, that's how you would do something like this so that is basically it taking scale uh, measuring things or making things smaller or bigger than they are all these th ways to create uh, an interesting composition are really important but the most important thing of course uh, at this point in this stage is the still life understanding that shapes lead to a composition and not working in the literal sense first working on the basic level understanding and identifying what a shape is and then using that shape to guide other shapes into your um, into your proper composition 
that's pretty much it. We don't have any more to talk about. If you like this video, give it a like. Um, give it a comment. Tell me what you guys think about uh, this video and this other uh, this series. If you want to uh, see more videos like this, let me know. Tell me what you guys want to see. I always um, am open to suggestions. Uh, that's the end of the video, everybody. Um, have a good night. I'm about to go to sleep right now. There's a hurricane outside. So, peace.